<laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to just drop all of his details in the cop in the um snap. What do they call it? Oh, <laughs> you have to repeat that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you were alive. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yo, and that was so nice, man. Yeah, that was so cool. Ah. I think I'm going to cut it somewhere. Okay, where am I going to pick it up again? I'm going to drop all these uh, details. Uh, uh, no, I'm going to take it back. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's your boy Isaac Melani on the Isaac Melani Media Show. And today we have someone very special again. Someone I've known from my time here in Queenstown. Very funny story how we actually got about to this interview, actually. It was literally, what was it, Wednesday? I think it was, yeah, Wednesday. Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. Thursday. yeah, it was on Thursday. Thursday. Today yeah. is Saturday, by the way. Thursday. I'm having my lunch outside, you know, just getting in some of that sunlight. <laughs> you know, with the whole COVID thing, you gotta like spend some time outside, you know. So like I'm busy having my, my chow, 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 and this guy just walks by and he's like, I'm on bra like you know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, away, away. So we're busy what was it? It was just like, hey, how are you doing? And yeah, then just to, we were just chatting and mm -hmm. we went back to when last we saw each other ah. and whatnot. Then it ended up basically coming to the point of us having this interview. Yeah, yeah. This interview. <laughs> Funny enough, we speak and he talks about how he's now rapping. And I'm like, what? Rapping? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, since we had the whole incident with, with Max the other day, but like the whole thing now is I'm very impressed by the quality of the sound. And like lyrically, bro, I feel like you are on some, honestly speaking, bro, honestly speaking, you're on some Tupac stuff, bro. Uh, <laughs> you know, really <laughs> like, like he's, he's very, very raw, you know, and he's very real. And you can hear the sincerity in his, in his voice, even your delivery, bro. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like amazing. But like, just let's roll back a bit. When last did we meet? Like when last were we? I think it was 2015, if not 16. It was mm -hmm. back in church. Yeah. Uh, I think we were still in the building next to the Absa uh, building. No, no, the Absa. Was it? It's not Absa. It's the one down next to BP. Yeah, yeah, but they didn't we move to the Absa building? That means I forgot, maybe. Oh, yeah, okay. Then we moved to the Absa building, but I think the last time I saw you was there. Oh, okay, oh, okay, oh, okay, cool. Well, um, yeah, bro, so much has changed. I think that was what 20. 2016, 2016. Yeah, like 2016. Yeah, yeah, 2016. Like now it's like four years on, you know. Yeah. A lot can happen in four years, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot Quite can a happen lot. in four years. Quite so, like, lot, tell yeah. me, Gengoku. Firstly, let's introduce him. His name is Njabulo. So, okay, you go for it. Bro. Okay, um, my name is Njabulo Kininda. Um, basically, um, I'm now living in Queenstown, but I'm basically born and raised in, in Bumalana, Middleburg. Um, I came here, I think it was 2013 back then, but I was still in drugs and I was still in basically the street life. And 2015 was then my, when my life actually revolutionized and it's where I met Jesus and my life changed completely. I was never the same again, you know, yeah. Um, mm. Currently I'm in fashion designing. I'm also in distribution of water and meat. And I'm also an entrepreneur, you know, mm. and also doing music as well, mm. you know, yeah, yeah. But most importantly, I'm a Christian. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 That, that's very important. That's yeah, very yeah, yeah. important, Jabulu. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I, I feel like it's, 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 it's always admirable, man, to, to, to see someone who's able to talk about their Christianity and like their belief and like let it be a free and well-known thing. So, yeah. Like, I, I, I really admire that. You know, as a young man, you know, in South Africa, you know, in 2020, to be able to be that way. Yeah, well. no, it's very important, you know, because like a lot of people, they don't wanna go out there and just say who they are because I don't know if it's shame or whatsoever, but I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Mm. I'm not ashamed of what God has done in my life because mm. I wouldn't have been having this conversation or kind of this interview if it wasn't for what God had done, mm. you know, the revolution of my life mm. in general, you mm. know. So, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. that's a deep testimony, man. Mm. Um, So, business of the day, like, are we going to talk about Tunjabulo, the man... The, the entrepreneur, the musician, or are we talking about Unjabulo, the musician? Uh, we can put both on the table. You know, we can take him back, take him, take, take you guys back from where I came from because that's uh, what's important yeah, yeah. To, to, to what brought me here. Yeah, and yeah. I believe the story can actually also 
help other people who are listening and also be relative to other people. Mm. You know, so I don't mind going back and basically pushing it back to now. Okay. Let's 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 do that. Let's yeah. do that. So basically, um, as I mentioned earlier, that I'm from Middleburg, Bomalanga. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I used to live in Middleburg, Bomalanga. I went to a school called Middleburg Combined School. Mm. You know, um, um, in 2007, it's where basically a lot of things started. Mm-hmm. My father passed away in the year 2007, mm-hmm. and right after that, in 20, I think nine, 2009, I started. I started doing music and rapping. You know, mm. expressing myself mm. because at that time I needed a father figure, and there wasn't a father figure to find it. My mom was a single mother. She was basically hustling and trying to find ways so that we can actually have a meal, mm. you know. So unfortunately, um, two years down the line, um, my mom started not basically being okay with the whole situation of her being a single mother. Mm. Uh, she started being in, in, in alcohol, you know, she started spending time outside. She wasn't basically okay with the whole thing. She would come back home and be very brutal and start beating us up, start being violent, you know, mm. to us. We didn't understand what was happening, you know. And I remember basically one night she came back and she she was swearing at us. She even basically broke the door, literally, sure. trying to, to, to basically attack us. Mm. And I remember we ran away, even calling the police and whatnot, mm. you know. So she was very violent. And so that affected us even in our school, you know, um, mm. activities. We weren't doing school, doing well at school. I was now smoking, you know basically being brutal to other kids mm-hmm. because there's, there's a saying that says hurt people hurt others mm. so I started hurting other people started being violent myself and so this thing went on for quite a number of time, times you know it went on and went on to a point that um, she one day tried to murder us you know right. for the third time you know she poured the petrol inside of the house the room that we were living in and she put the petrol and we came back at night we were a little bit high we were high mm. and when we got in there she was behind the door and she was about to light so i smelled basically because i i used to smoke petrol yeah. so i smelled the, the smell that this is not yeah. this, this is something different here you know so when i told my brother then she, she basically arose from the from behind the, the the door and immediately she started attacking us and we ran away that was basically the last day we we, we came back home we never slept home ever since that day. To now, to this day. So wow. we moved from home, and we were still at school. I was doing my grade eight with uh-huh. my brother or Arthur, you know. So we moved and started sleeping in people's house, our friends, our peers. We would move from house to house, you know, mm. just sleeping from there to there, and we were smoking, you know. Mm. And now you need to understand, people get tired, mm. yeah, you know, yeah. accommodating people. Yeah, you know? yeah. So they got tired, and now we had to move from house to house. Mm. Um, Close to a lot, of, I don't even can't even recall the number of houses we had to move. Mm. So you know, as we started moving from house to house, and it became a very big problem. So from there on, the only way to survive, I was now surviving by basically selling weed, because there was a guy that uh, that asked me to sell weed for him at school. So I started doing that. I was selling now the weed at school, you know, smoking it and selling it. Then eventually I, I smoked the entire weed with my friends, you know, and messed it up. Mm. And the guy started looking for me brutally. Yeah. You know, so without that, I was also stealing laptops, you know, and playstations. And now the guys find out and they, they started looking out, looking out for me. You know, they were looking for me and st- they, they tried to, you know, get me and beat me up. Mm. So with all of that taking a place with you know, my mom, you know, being mentally disturbed, the guys looking for me at school, I'm not doing very well. It was just so much pressure to me, you know. Mm. So to cut the long story short, I remember asking my brother, Arthur, that we need to go back to Mbumala. I mean, to, to the Eastern Cape, the motherland, which is the Eastern Cape. So I hated Queenstown. I hated, you know, this place. I really never saw myself coming in here and actually living or kind of building a life here, yeah. you know. But it so happened that I, we ended up having to leave. Mm. So fortunately, the house that we were living in, there was, it was a Corsa family, the last house that we, li- yeah. we were living in. So the family actually opened up. They were leaving to Kofimbaba, I think, mm. across those, those areas. So they took us with. We were behind in Mabaki, me and my brother. They, they drove us through. We, we came here to the Eastern Cape. Mm. And that was 2013, December. Hey, how old were you then? I think I was 15. Sure, 15, sure. Yeah, 15, not 16. It was 15. Mm. So came here. It was 2013, and it was December. In my mind of mind, I thought that I was going to change. I thought maybe things were going to be afresh, you know, that mm. I was going to be a better person. I'm no longer going to be involved in drugs and anything. Mm. But lo and behold, when I got here, I met the very same people. Mm. And I, I met people who had the same, you know, addictions, the same spirit. So I, mm. I just went, went loose. 
Yeah. I started shoplifting. I started robbing kids who were coming back from school, oh, like wow. Milo. Ah. You know, it just it just accumulated. You mm. know, and it just got darker and darker. Mm. Every morning I would wake up in this and wake up and go to a shop and ask one rand, two rand, just to smoke. You know, mm. and that was just the life that I had to live. Mm. The whole year 2014, it was the same thing over and uh-huh. over. Were you were you again. going to school? No, I wasn't because remember, when we left, we ran away. Okay. So when we ran away, we left our, we left all our documentations. Mm. No ID. I'm only 15, 16. Mm. You understand? I haven't done my ID. I don't even know my ID number by mm. head. So there's no documents. So mm. if I'm looking for a school here, I can't I can't yeah. I can't get any opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like stuck. It's like life is stuck. Mm. You know, so it so happened that um, in the whole year, like uh, it was the same thing over and over again. I remember it was in December, the 2014. I I was so I was so stuffed up. I was like I was so tired with the whole life because I knew that I'm coming from like Bumalanga Middle but It's quite different, more different than Queenstown. So I, I remember speaking to myself that no, this this has to change. Mm. You know, jump into 2015 when the years began. I stopped smoking weed. Mm. You know, I just dropped weed. And when I dropped, was me, it just a conscious decision you made? It was a conscious just, decision. You woke up one day like, okay, I'm stopping. No, I, it. I, I'm not. I, I made it in advance that I'm when the year starts, like resolutions. Okay. Okay. When the year starts, okay. I'm going to stop. You know. Okay. So the year started when it started. And you I just stopped. stopped. Yeah. You know? But the only problem that I had was the the nicotine, uh, the cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. The other drugs that I was using, like thick, uh, I just uh. I just left that. You know, when I left the friends as well. Mm. So it went on and went on. I think it was January, February, March. April, April by April, yeah, it was April the 1st. April the 1st is when I met the guy by the name of Ongalit. Mm, you know, mm. he challenged me, you know, he brought the, the, the gospel to me, he preached to me, and when he challenged, him, challenged me, I was like, in my mind, I was like, no. I thought I was just going to get clothes from him, you know, and just go to church for that day, mm. and he's not going to get his clothes. Mm. That's, what I, that's what I had in mind. So I was literally trying to rob him. Mm. So I spoke, spoke to him, he spoke to me, and it was like that, okay, I'm going to go to church. Fine. I remember there was there was a revival of Pastor Hector Ortiz, mm. you know. So, to cut the long story short, we went to church, and when we got there, I don't want to lie to you, you know, something supernatural took place. Yeah. I can't explain it in words. Yeah. That's where my life automatically changed. Mm. Uh, the preacher preached, and right there, mm. I was confronted with the gospel. Yeah. And I gave and my the life. Holy Spirit took over. Man. You understand? Like, I gave yeah. my life immediately, and that's where like I gave my life, you know. And the journey started there. <laughs> You know, then I got delivered from basically the addiction of nicotine mm. and a lot of addictions that I had. Mm. You know, then my life, that was now a new chapter. Mm. You know, the only thing that was a problem was bitter towards my mom mm. based on all that had taken place and where yeah. I am. You know, so I had to now let go and forgive my mom, which uh. was a basically a hard decision. Mm. You know, so I, I let her go, I forgave her. And now look at me, I had to start up fresh. Mm. So during that time, I was still rapping, even while mm. I was, you know, in the sin, I was still rapping with the guys. I had mm. a couple of crews that I was a part of. You know, I was still doing music, but mm. I started now doing it for the Lord. You yeah. know, I changed the direction mm. to the Lord now, and I just gave it to God, mm. you know, to whom it belonged to. Yeah, yeah. You know, so from there on, it started growing, and the community, the church, you know, showed love. They helped me. They supported mm. me, you know, in different areas, you know, of my life. They, they prayed for me, everything, man. You know, they groomed me, you know, mm. they challenged me in, di- in different ways, you know. Then my life literally changed, and I started getting into... I got a job, I think I remember in exact, mm. and I lost the job after a year, and I was frustrated. After losing the job, I decided I'm going to do my own thing. Mm. I'm going to pursue my passion. And so I decided to go for fashion designing, uh-huh. you know, because I liked fashion a lot. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. fashion, you know, so I went for fashion, you know, and I started learning, you know, how to sew and so forth, mm. you know, to cut the long story short, God provided someone paid even fees for me, uh, you know, then I went to another lady by yeah, the name of man. Kosi Jaya, mm. you know, she started teaching me, she imparted more knowledge and she told okay. me how to do, you know, so I grew and then I opened my own business, okay. uh, Cafe Innovations, uh, and while I was there, I found my niche, mm. you know, which is bags, so I'm more focused in bags, okay, yeah, yeah. you understand, so from is there it, on, is it, so, sorry, is, is it like men's bags, is it, what, what kind of bags are they? It's both, it's it's men and women, you know, mm-hmm. it's men and women's bags, you know, any type of bags, it's rack sacks, it's uh, basically the, the sling wait, bags. Wait, 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 this is, this is actually quite cool. Do you have one of those bags here by any chance? I'm only having one, the one that I'm oh, wait, carrying. Oh, nice. Could you please just bring a bag, bro, so we can check it out? Yeah, no, no. We, we, we can showcase that, like, now. <laughs> the one that I have is yeah. the one I'm carrying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a simple bag, you know. Uh. Yeah, there you go. You know, it's a slim bag. Open it inside. Basically, mm-hmm. it's African inside. 
and then basically Yo. it's vintage outside. It's just a simple bag. Ah. Yeah, but I wish I, if I knew, I would have brought more maybe. Oh, this is really cool, man. Did you did you manufacture this like yourself? Yeah, everything from the design, to the, the design to everything, you know, every single thing. Bro, this is really good quality. <laughs> Really appreciate it. Whoa. <laughs> really appreciate it. This is really good quality. You know, so it's African inside and uh-huh. it's vintage outside. It's classic outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Vintage inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me, like, is, is, is your rap name? Yes. Apocalypse, yeah? Yeah. When I hear Apocalypse, I think destruction, I think the end of the world. Hmm. Let's talk about that. Okay. Going into that, you know, Apocalypse, basically the name came from, you know, when I looked at the Bible, it has different um, definitions, mm. you know, if you go and basically do a search of the name. Um, from my angle, I took it from the angle of the Bible. Mm. The word, you see the Revelation, it talks about the Apocalypse. Mm. So my name, it's based on Revelation, like mm. revealing what's going to happen, mm. what is currently happening, you know, and also revealing what has happened. Mm. You know, so it's it's basically about that. Mm. So I basically chose that name to reveal to people and also mm. maybe like like John the Baptist to mm. tell them that basically it's something mm. is gonna happen. So you, you know, are the apocalypse. Put it that way. Oh yeah. so this snap. the music that I do is apocalypse music. Uh, yeah, apocalypse music. Oh yeah. yeah oh, so yeah. yeah. Um um you, you, you mentioned you mentioned a certain genre that I like have heard around but like I've never really like listen to or thought i'd listen to you know mm. you mentioned that you do real rap and i was like what's real rap like like what is real rap <laughs> yeah, basically it's 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 real rhythm and poetry you mm. know it's basically you know when you go back to hip-hop you know hip-hop it's basically the message behind it it's mm. the flow you know it's the punch line you know you, you it's more than just basically saying words you mm. know yeah it, there's more into it the storytelling it differs mm. you know but it's real rap you've got to mm. express a message at the end of the day yeah yeah but you've got to express a message at the end of the day but it's something that is rare nowadays because basically there's a new new culture that is taken over mm. you know and the new culture has actually clouded mm. real rap yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah but it doesn't change the fact that there are still real rappers i hear you yeah, I hear yeah. You. but like w- what's your take on that how do you feel about the whole Screw, screw, whatever you know. Uh, to be honest, to me, uh, I'm not a fan of trap. Uh-huh. You know, I'm a good enemy of trap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to be honest to you, for me, I believe music, when you rap itself, it's about the rhythm and the poetry, the uh-huh. message behind it. Mm. You know, the very moment that we move away from the message, then it's all about just playing around mm-hmm. with words. Then no one is healed. No one basically is challenged. No one is changed mm. because music itself is a form of ministry for me. Yeah, yeah. And I utilize it as a way of expressing what has happened yeah. to me. What basically. You know, mm. my, my fears, you know, my faith, mm. you know, uh, my views. You yeah. know, and that's what I, I use music for, mm. you know. But unfortunately, the new school has actually now, you know, yeah. and, 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 and I think, like, a lot of people don't realize that artists, you know, like writers, like painters, like, you know, art, artists, mm. musicians, you know, they're actually they're there to, to, to change the world. Like, you know, like, exactly like, exactly. like you said, you know, like... Exactly. It's, exactly. it's, 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 yo, it's amazing just it's how about big that. that is when you think about it. It is about that, 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 that it is really literally about that. Mm. But now the challenge is that this is what, what is happening currently. The new school is taken over yeah. and everyone is like, from my perception, it's like fans have turned to rappers. But, but one could argue that that type of music does have a message too. For me, I've... One could argue because mm. it's, it's, it's my word against theirs, yeah, yeah. you know. So for me, it's my perception, understanding trap and rap. Mm-hmm. It differs because trap is more about the beat, mm. you know, more than just the lyrics. Mm. I can you can play one song of trap, you can hear that it's more in the beat, mm. and now it's just the movement of the beat, you know, mm. and murmuring of words. You understand? <laughs> then it becomes mumble rap. You understand? Yeah. And so for me, in, in real rap, it's basically throwing bars. Mm. And when for me, you can't just listen to a rap song basically. You have to sit down and listen and put more, you know, uh-huh. more time to understand yeah, what, yeah. what the person is trying yeah, to express. Yeah. I hear you. And every time you listen, you hear something you, you, new and it relates differently on a different you, day. Exactly. I hear you. That's, I hear that's, you. that's, that's, that, that, that's, that's what it's all about. That's real artistry. Yeah. But for me, it's a gift that God gave me and he can't give me a gift and I can't use it. Yes, sir. He gave me for a purpose, so I got to use it. Use it to glorify his name yeah. at that, you know. That's that's that's, that's the main cause. Yeah, yeah. It's not about me, it's not it's mm. all about him. Yeah, yeah. yeah.
I'm really, I'm really, I'm really interested in the work that you said you were doing. Firstly, that bag is really amazing. Thanks, but I know that there's more. I'll uh, away, away. I feel like we should even put those up so that like your details and that's so how people know how to reach you. Okay. Do you have like a website or a Facebook page? I'm still working on a website, you know. I had a Facebook page as a Cape Innovations, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So I do have it, but I don't use it much. Uh, but uh, as soon as I'm still working on my finances to uh, just finance the business, you know, it's currently not doing well due to the COVID. Uh, and it's like I'm stuck currently, you know, sure. there's a lot of challenges in regards to that arena. Sure. So, but as soon as I kick off, I will be out there. But uh, people can still check me, you know, at Agape Innovations. On how, Facebook. how many of those bags do you have, like no. in stock? Currently, I don't have any stock uh -huh. because basically I work with orders. Sure. If a person orders, basically I work with the order, then I give them. And then how long does it take for you to get your order? Uh, as soon as you make an order today, tomorrow I deliver. You know what? Yeah, you make an order today, tomorrow I deliver. It is <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> You can make that in a day. Yeah, in a day I can do that. It's like, I think it's three hours to do this bag. What? Yeah, it's three hours. You basically cut it because already I have a pattern. Mm -hmm. So what I do, I put it, I put it on top of the fabric. Then I just cut it out literally. And I know exactly what is needed. Mm -hmm. The centimeters, I'm, I'm certain how many centimeters on the mm -hmm. machine that I need to utilize. Sure. So exactly, that's, I know. So, exactly. so, so I come to you and I say, I want a bag, please. You ask me what kind of bag. I want yes. a backpack. I want a, a sling bag. Yeah, I then want... on other bags, then it differs on the type of bags it, mm -hmm. bag it is. Because mm -hmm. some bags differ and the size differ. Mm -hmm. And the other thing with bags, they have pockets. You know, yeah. you a lot of pockets. Then that's the way the, the time gets mm -hmm. spent on. Because you have to create the pockets, the pockets mm -hmm. first, and then combine it and put it together. I hear you. Then it becomes the whole product. I hear you. No, man, I, I'm, I'm sorry I keep drifting in and out of the whole rap and the, the fashion part. It's just like, it's. I just feel like it's, it's, it's really amazing, man. It's no, really, I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed. Nyan, 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 yeah, nyan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm really impressed. Oh, um, okay, sorry, let's go back to the music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you, you mentioned an album. Yeah, I'm working on basically an ending tunnel. Mm -hmm. It's an album. Unending tunnel. Yeah, unending tunnel. As I mentioned my story earlier before, ah. you know, to the point of when I got became a Christian. Mm. Um, unending tunnel comes basically in as, you know, my life story, like the tunnel that I had to go through as a young mm. kid. You know, having no father, having a mother, basically, but mm. she got mentally disturbed. Okay. You know, and basically after she got sick, it became a challenge to us. We had to go through a tunnel of mm. darkness for a very long period of poverty, you know, and... You know, a lot of things got stripped mm. away from us. And we came to the Eastern Cape, lived here. We still challenged and we got into darkness mm. more and more and more up until the light came, fortunately. Mm. But even when the light came, there were still some challenges in the light mm. that we had to go through because obviously the enemy was not happy with, with change. So it's, it's another tunnel as well that mm. you had to go through. So it's basically all about the chapters of my life of hardships. You know, yeah, this challenge that even I, I got as a Christian, because sometimes as Christians we go through things, mm. and it's, it's not good to sell Christianity as basically as a, what can I say, as a perfect thing. Yeah, yeah. We have challenges in Christianity. Mm. You know, it is it's something great to be a Christian, yes, but uh, Christianity has, a, has challenges. That's yes, why the Bible uh, says it narrow is the way. Mm. You know, it's not an easy way, mm. you know, to take, but it's the best way, you know. Yeah. So Unending Tunnel is about basically the narrow path mm. that I had to go through of unending challenges mm. you know unending challenges mm. they, they just differ so so when did you start writing the album if i can be honest to you i started the album basically during the COVID, the COVID uh -huh. season yeah when the COVID struck when we are in lockdown you know i got so inspired you know and mm. I, I started writing i spent more time you know on the music and expressing myself it actually started as an ep you know mm. it started as an ep of, mm. of basically seven songs mm. and after that it just grew and grew and grew to it. I thought it was, but then I changed it to a mixtape. Mm. You know, then after that I realized no. And I was spoke, speaking to one guy from Mpumalanga, whom I used to go to school with, with mm. of which he's going to publish the music mm. for me. He gave me a good offer. So he said to me, no, the music flows so good together and the message is so connected. And even the theme of Unending Tunnel, rather just making an album. Mm. You know, so I took it and I said, no, it's fine. It, then an album it will be. You know. I feel like I have a lot of questions just based on what you said. Go yeah, well, okay. First question. <laughs> Where is Arthur now? My brother. Uh, my brother, he's born again as a Christian. Mm. You know, God basically saved him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through the grace of God, you know. He Glory took him to from, God. Took him from all the addiction, the life that was. Mm. You know, and now he lives with me. We live in the same 
place. Mm-hmm. Together we go to the same church. He's mm-hmm. born again on fire for God. He also he's also a rapper, by the way. Yes, sir. he's also a rapper. By uh-huh. the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was the first question. <laughs> now, um, how 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 do you? distribute music like uh, i'm just curious to find okay. out this like i'm learning as i'm listening to you type okay. of thing uh-huh. the thing is this with the distribution you i used to do music as in church just just basically performing in church mm. that's where i grew you know so i used to just perform music just perform it perform it in church mm. and that's the way i used to do it then i yeah. started recording it. yeah after recording that's i started just sharing it for free and uh-huh. because i was using people's beats but when i found a good producer Who's that producer? His name is Odwan Futwani. He okay. lives in Zeleni. Okay. Very good guy. Very good and does his job very well. Mm. You know, so I I met the guy through a gentleman by the name of Kai. His name is KJV, also a good musician, mm. a guitarist as well and a singer as well. Mm. So I met I met him through the, the, the gentleman. So he started doing the music for me and helping me out. I was very happy with the with the quality. Uh-huh. You know, so from there on I I only I now struggled to put my music on the platforms mm. because of the funds and the fees, mm. you know. So it became a challenge. But when I when I sent my music, music to most of the guys in Pomalanda, as I said to you, I mentioned a guy named Julius. Mm. Yeah, he offered me like a deal on the royalties and stuff. So I made a deal with him. He's gonna now put the music on title, you know, on Deezer and Google Play. Oh wow! On the good platforms, you know, it's really, oh, wow. really good. It's, it's a very good offer, ah. you know. So for me, I'm very glad that the. the whole album will be will be reachable very soon mm. so it's my first album sure you must i must say you know because i've been doing music underground uh-huh. and just sharing uh-huh. literally but now they're going to get it online uh-huh. you know but a couple of songs if people need needs needs them i can i, I do not mind sharing some uh-huh. you know but some they will be they will be found online uh-huh. um i want to talk about this as well um hmm. apocalypse <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 i want to talk about this like how does it feel now and it's you, you you've been this person that's have to that's had to overcome all these challenges you yes. know and now you 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 find yourself in a position where you're about to put yourself out there you know you're about to put a piece of or My even your, your whole heart actually yeah. you're about to put it out there for the world to to be able to view and take from or judge you know what i mean because i mean this is real real you know what i mean yeah, yeah. And, and and it's something that i'm having to overcome with this channel even as yeah, well because yeah. i feel like i'm not i'm not someone who's outspoken or whatever you know what i mean i don't like the limelight yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah but like yeah. I, I, this is something i want to do because i really want to to inspire yeah, and to change lives or whatever well, you know yeah. what i mean because I, I feel like that's what god has instilled within me you know that's yeah. my duty to do for yeah. him you know what i mean yeah so i'm here yeah <laughs> yeah well yeah. Yeah. So like, what, what's it like for you? Do you ever have any concerns? Do you are you just completely excited? What what's um, up with that? Okay, you know, first of all, um, it is at some point a challenge. You know, mm. let me put it this way: um, I'm not used to the way I'm going to do things now. Mm. You know, but my aim and my intentions are the main thing that I'm mm. happy about. My intention is not fame. Mm. It's not about me, as I mentioned. Mm. But it's just that I realize that I've got a gift. The Bible mm. says. How can you have a light and put it under mm. the table? So it's no use for me to have something that can be heard mm. and that can touch other people and yet keep it to myself. Mm. Even the Bible itself says it says that we should make disciples, you know. So mm. I cannot maybe preach to a person that is in Nigeria. I cannot preach to a person that is maybe in in, in Bumalanga now. Mm. But I can send them mu- music mm. that can speak and challenge mm. to them. And to some extent that can convince them that there is a God in mm. heaven. And there are challenges that you can overcome in mm. life. You know, and so forth. So I am excited through that, you mm. know, and I'm very excited about that. And it's something new for me and I'm exploring, you know. Mm. But what I'm happy about, as I mentioned, is the fact that the intention, mm. that I want God to be glorified. And as a Christian, I I'm just want to, I want to break the boundary mm. of the same level. Because sometimes, you know, we, we mistake it. Christianity that we have to reach a certain level yeah, yeah. in a certain yeah, culture, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, because we're not we're not used to to to, to new things. Mm. We love the norm. Yeah. When someone starts to spring out, we have a problem. Yeah, There's something wrong. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. for me, I feel like I'm ready for anything because sure. I know why I'm doing it, and I feel God has inspired me sure. to do it. You know, because I have a relationship with God personally. Sure. You know, so I, I'm just doing it out of my heart so that other people can be reached and mm. that He may be glorified at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. You know. 
glory to god man glory to god yeah. so yeah. so so like based on everything i've just heard you say right now and mm. the album is called um unending channel yes first thing the album is about your life story yeah so basically i'm expecting um dad not being there mom being abusive running away you know the robberies yeah. the drugs mm. and god and god and um and basically there's also motivational songs in it uh ah. you know because it's not only about the bad that it that mm. took place it's also about the good mm. for example there's a song entitled wipe your tears ah. remember god knows your fears you know mm. that song literally breaks it down oh. about the challenges that the person that encounters that oh. you battle with fears sometimes it's hard to sleep with his tears uh-huh. you know it so, goes on and on but it's, it's also a motivational song it's not the only song that is almost also motivation mm. there's still other songs as well uh-huh. but yeah Can I, I I know we spoke about this and it's not going to be that. <laughs> it's not going to be that. But I feel like the way you project your voice even like you're a real poet man like like the, what you just said now yeah. it just gave me an idea. Oh. Can you give me your favorite verse from your favorite song? Don't you don't have to rap it just recite it like you want to hear it. Okay um yes he's going to do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. It goes like um I watch the whole world crumble to pieces before my eyes the skies the moon the stars worship god by night some plants grow in the dark like no one building my ark a million sinners in hell frustrated to trade one moment death merit to moaning divorce sin to behold him saints falling like flies who told you truth is not lies false teachers in motion deception the deepest ocean many drowning their sorrows i blame them for who they fought Let us stray by your ways. The path of sin always pays. Courtesy on my plate as the book of life has your name. Because many dream about heaven, but few maintain the standard. The thief steals and kills, but God gave in abundance. Ah, oh. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> There's apocalypse music, you know. Yo. Yeah. Yo. Yeah, yeah. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you heard that. Yo, bro, like, no, man, like, I'm really, I'm really in awe, man, because Nyan, you sent those, those few songs, yeah. yeah. And like I was from the get go the very first song I played I was like wow <laughs> I know I, mm. I keep giving him glory you know Yo. yeah I know bro you know I'm, even myself sometimes you know because I had challenges even like uh. last month you know I had a ch- couple of challenges like really serious challenges mm. but it's funny because when I listen to the song when I listen to myself yeah. I, I, I wonder how they are like this uh. you know because I also <laughs> you know because I also relate much and I'm like how, like it encourages mm. me because sometimes you know with also the Christian life You know, you can't back off when you write such things. Mm. You leave left a mark so that people will start looking at your life. You know, so now when pe- when you've said those things, people are looking at your life. Ah. And I'm telling you. So yeah. it's very important to live that example. Yeah. You know, and also when those challenges come, you are able to oh, actually oh, reference the song. Oh, you know, snap. and you know, yeah. I, I feel like you've been ready though, because I mean, you know, when I said the whole thing about putting yourself out there, yeah. being a Christian is putting yourself out there, bro. Right? Like you're constantly judged every day, any day, anyway. Exactly. So like you've been ready, bro. Exactly. Nah, you got this, bro. Honestly, it, is, it is what it is. You know? It is. No, I, I am. I want to lie to you. I am ready. You know. But mm. the thing is, this there are certain limits. You know, there are certain limits. You know, I, I, there are certain limits that I'm like I can't go to that far. Mm. You know, and I've put myself in that position because of the things that I believe God still wants me to do as well. Mm. Because although there's there's musical factor, I don't want to go all out to that point. Mm. You know, but. I have my own level mm. you know because there's also fashion involved there's mm. also you know my own basically belief that I believe God has called me to do ah. you know personally yeah so and, yeah. and 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 the business of that I feel just works hand in hand you know like if you if you're an artist and you can style yourself and you can create your own brand it is, it is that's that's a whole other revenue just thinking about it yeah, well, no it is it is it yeah. works if art goes to get it's a connection mm. you know mm. it connects you know mm. it connects it yeah connects. But all in all, man, I really appreciate the opportunity uh-huh. as well. Yeah, yeah. And like, and like, there's some vernacular in your music as well, right? Like, I, I actually, yeah. It's, you know what's funny? <laughs> you know what's funny? That's actually my first vernacular song. Is it? I've never written vernacular. You know, I've, I've never, I've never, I've never. The person that taught me, you know, if I can mm. go back, which is very important, mm. you know, I, I really need to thank that person. His name is Simpiwe. He's 
is in Pomalanga. Sure. You know, in Middleburg, he's the first person that braved, you know, the, the hip hop music mm. in me. And he taught me, you know. And was that side of Smutuako? Yeah, it's Smutuako mixture. Uh-huh. I also do Tuana as well. Is it? Oh, yeah. way. Yeah, the, next, the next EP I'm going to do, it's going to be mixed with Tuana and Zulu. Uh-huh. I'm going to play around with the sure, languages. Sure, sure. You know, yeah, because at least God has given me a number of languages since I was mm. there. So I can play around with the languages as sure. well. Sure, yeah, nice, bro. So going back to what I said, the guy that gave it to me, he's the one. He does Vanek muchly. Mm. So he gave a bird of Vanek to me, you know. So I... I haven't done this in a while, so that was my first song, just, mm. you know, having that Vanek on it. Yo. And so that I was think a, there's still more That songs. was a sick hook, eh? Like, yeah. I'd hook yo. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Thanks. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Yeah. No, man. Um, Jabulu, I feel like we've covered basically everything. Is there anything you want to add? Anything you want to say? Anything you want to... Oh, do you know what? Mm. Because it's 2020, mm. <laughs> there's COVID, yeah. you know? Is there like a message you want to like pass on to Queenstown, to South Africa, the world? My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, basically, all I can say is the fact that in all that is taking place currently, it's not new, it's biblical. Mm. The Bible has for so that, okay, the Bible has pre mentioned it, you know. Mm. So it's nothing new. It's, it's just something that we have to live in. But most importantly, we have to go back to the root, which is God. Mm. And I believe this is like an, it's an awakening. You know, we've got to wake up and see that God is, Jesus is coming back. Mm. You know, and it's very important that we go back to the creator mm. because that's, that's all we need now. We see lives every day. People, people are dying. Mm. You know, people are getting infected. Mm. And it's just getting worse and worse. And mm. the sad question is, who's next? Mm. You might be next. Mm. I might be next. Oh, snap. <laughs> but the good question that I might ask is, mm. are you right with him? Yes, sir. Because if you're not right with him, then unfortunately, you're not going to step into yeah, eternity. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, the reality, yeah. you know. And it's a, it's a sad reality, bro. Exactly. So it's very important that we understand that in this mm. time, you know, in this day and age. And it's very important that we go back to the roots and give ourselves to God. Mm. And God will be the one that actually protects us and mm. does everything in need. You know, so I think that's all I can say. Just, mm. just, just give your life to him. <laughs> you know, that's the most important thing that uh, I can say in this entire uh, conversation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks, yeah. bro. <clears throat> so there we have it. Apocalypse. Jabulo. <laughs> yeah. The man behind the man. <laughs> yeah. Has spoken. And basically what he's saying is, be right with your God. Because the end of days is near. Yeah. The apocalypse is yeah. here. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, man, um, thanks for watching, guys. If you managed to watch all the way to this part of the video, then you're a real legend. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. Most definitely. We're just going to drop all of these details down below. You're, of course, welcome to comment. You're, of course, welcome to like. Thumbs up, thumbs down, you know. But, I mean, come on, show some love, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Be true. Be true. <laughs> Yeah, so that's it. We're out and enjoy your day. Apocalypse music. Um, we're really going to try and rush this one. So, like, literally, we're recording today and hopefully it will be out tomorrow. Really sorry for skipping last weekend. Um, but, yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for everything. Yeah, let's go. Cheers. an earthquake you've carried more in this life it hurts to watch you break life gives and takes but we learn from your own mistakes i wrote this song to remind you of your love and grace i do appreciate i keep no hate for previous pains you had no muscles yet you hustled to put food on plates when daddy was late your change made us relocate mama this journey's been hard we had to penetrate sometimes we love and hate but through it all we've learned to wait the state of our lives is not what we anticipated it's complicated but i met the god that i once hated i hope that one day we would meet up in a better place I never doubted your love, it's what I still embrace And since your name is Grace, forgive me for my own mistakes I had no kicks with my brother, but I'm the one to blame But justice has came, and now we on the same lane We praying that God would heal you so you can know his name All my addictions are broken, now I'm a free man I've dealt with my past, I'm no longer bitter and mad I've blown all the ashes, I'm not attached to what we had I've dealt with my past, I'm no longer bitter and mad I've blown all the ashes, I'm not attached to what we had I've dealt with my past, I'm no longer bitter and mad 
the first lady that my eyes behold Beauty unfolds, you're noble Your worth is more than diamonds and gold The first woman that my arms and hold Your love is home, I adore you Through all the storms, you're not on your own The first lady that my eyes behold Beauty unfolds, you're noble Your worth is more than diamonds and gold The first woman that my arms and hold Your love is home, I adore you Through all the storms, you're not on your own It took me time to understand all that happened was God's plan To be honest, I really was never a church fan But it's where you raised me, it's where you praised me Why would I erase the ink on these beautiful pages Rebellious stages, it was way before our dark ages The brim stages, no one can take your place Even the one I long to marry I pray that God will keep you So you could meet your grandbabies My mischievousness constantly kept me in more trouble I struggled to be a good kid I love to hustle for weed in the streets You often kick me out cause I would barely sit and listen I always had answers, I thought I knew all I was missing There are teachings I still practice in your absence The essence of gratitude and providing for those in need My heart bleeds when I think of my young breed Growing up without the father and mother's a great need My heart bleeds when I think of my young breed The first lady that my eyes behold Beauty unfolds, you know your worth is more than diamonds and gold The first woman that my arms and hold Your love is home, I adore you Through all the storms you're not on your own The first lady that my eyes behold Beauty unfolds, you're noble Your worth is more than diamonds and gold The first woman that my arms and hold Your love is home, I adore you Through all the storms you're not on your own